Thursday's market closes mostly higher except for feeder cattle futures. Joining us to visit about that is global commodity analytics Mike Zuzalo. Uh, let's talk about grain trade first, Mike. Obviously, the market is still seemingly trading maybe some lower yields. What do you think we are trading right now, and what are we going to get out of the report tomorrow? Well, I think it was really interesting because in the middle of the day, BBC's midday update included a northern hemisphere drought, Michelle, and they talked about five major high pressure systems over the northern hemisphere. And so I really think we're getting into more of a weather market, less supply mindset, and not just in the United States. And so that takes some of the pressure, I think, off of the USDA report and what WASD may do, especially when it comes to what they say about Ukraine and Ukrainian exports. They're starting to get wheat out. They're starting to get veg oils and corn out. Are they going to raise the export number in Ukraine in the August report? And is that then going to turn the wheat maybe a little bit more negative towards the uh, other commodities, the row crops? Um, the other thing I think that really came out on Thursday that helps underpin us here in terms of the corn, especially is the European Union and the strategies grains uh, update for uh, French corn down 10 million tons, lowest number since 2007. So a 15 year low. And I think that could go lower, actually. Yeah, we're not just talking about weather and yield losses here in the United States. Obviously, this is a global situation right now that we'll talk about in the WASD coming up tomorrow. But, you know, we've rallied going into the report. So, you know, average trade guesses are just a little over a bushel lower on corn, about a half bushel on beans. But how much do we need to see those yields reduce to keep the bulls fed here? I think we needed to go a little bit more than that. Last year on the August report, USDA cut the corn yield by 2.7%. They cut the bean yield by 1.6%. I think we're in line for something like that that we need to keep the bull running, especially as we go through the weekend and look towards maybe an early week next week system that comes through Iowa and Minnesota. I think we're at a point now, Michelle, after seeing what I saw on my crop tour from Atchison in northeast Kansas over to Detroit, Michigan, is I'm really going to focus on Iowa, Minnesota, Illinois, and Nebraska from here on out. That's about 46% of this year's planted acres. And if those crop conditions in those four states start to go down from here, I don't think they're going to come back. And I say that because I'm starting to see and I'm starting to hear from producer clients that word that we heard last year, and it's tip back. Yeah. I think the corn tip back could be a real issue again. But that's not going to probably show up until the September report. That's exactly right. You're going to have to be nimble. We still have the U.S. Chinese issues with Taiwan. We heard Thursday the U.S. may rethink their tariff uh, situation with China because of the reaction uh, about Taiwan. And, and so you've got a lot of things still on your plate that you're going to have to wait until probably another 30 days. But I think the August report for me really sets up whether the wheat can hold those big lows, that big trend line on the monthly chart that we've tested a couple times and bounced very nicely off of. So as we start to transition from supply into demand, what's your thoughts there? Exports haven't been that great the last few weeks. We've had cancellations on the soybean side of things. Um, is that something that will be adjusted at all in this report? I think it will be. I think the big thing looking forward, though, kind of to your earlier point, Michelle, is the dollar trend. Are we going to have the dollar as a tailwind like we've had so far this week, thanks to those inflation numbers? It really took the pressure off the outside markets to think about the Federal Reserve raising rates aggressively. That really pushed us into a new monthly low in the uh, U.S. dollar. That took us to an eight-week high in the Brazilian real. I would say 60, 75 percent of the price action in beans this week has been more currency related and fund related due to those currencies. So I'd really like to see the rest of this August see a trend line break below in the U.S. dollar. That takes care of the issue of the demand erosion at higher prices because we have fewer uh, countries out there that we can co that will compete against us at this point. Right. We've also seen a demand push. We've seen the bull spreads working in both corn and soybeans, but in particular soybeans and soybean meal. Is there a shortage of meal anywhere right now or what's going on that we're seeing that big spread play? I think this is where the weekly export sales really told me a lot potentially, and that's where Mexico's drought's getting bad enough that they're really bringing in a lot of meal. And I think this is another one of those sleeper issues that kind of like the EU drought, no one really was thinking about or talking about. I think you bring up a huge point about the soybeans. The August SEP spread on Thursday 
went to two dollars on a close but it actually took out the 2014 high of 208 and so i'm really sitting here thinking will WASDE's report numbers tell us anything about the old crop ending stocks for soybeans are we tighter than we really think we are or thought we were back in july are we going to see a big drop in carryover for 2021 ending stocks that's going to be one of the key things to watch for and that would prevent us i think from eroding that spread too much what about this wheat market? You mentioned the lower dollar. Obviously, that certainly helps here. But are we just seeing this market being so oversold after the big pullback that we're just getting some technical buying and we're trying to bottom or what's going on? Yeah, you know, when it comes to the weather, I see the, the corn market and the cattle market a lot similar with one another. But when it comes to the demand side, I see the wheat market and the cattle market very similar in terms of the end user trade psychology and sitting kind of on their hands and not wanting to buy. But I think that we're starting to see some real movement now this past week. And I think the European Union and what we know about Ukraine getting out some boats, but not a lot of boats is really helping. And they're they're I think their updated uh, numbers for harvest is around 50%, which would be wheat and barley at this point. But my take on wheat is the end users are going to have to come in and buy some here relatively soon because they see kind of the writing on the wall with the Northern Hemisphere. They see a tighter corn crop, and therefore I think they see less substitution ability for wheat versus corn. Okay, so we've likely bottomed that market. I think we have. That's why that that's where that big trend line support drawn off the 2020 lows is a big, big deal to me after this month's report by WASD. Cattle market continues to be very strong here. Cash trade continues to push us, but the charts look very good as well, don't they? Yeah, they do. And I think that 144 to 148 was a wake up call to the market. And I think that's where the futures traders got behind this market because the cash, like we've seen a lot this past few weeks, it's coming in late in the week. As I said, I think the Packers really had to jump because the drought is real, even though we're seeing heavier cattle, females still coming into the slaughter mix. I think they see this drought. They see the 106 degree highs that Hutchinson, Hutchinson Kansas may face early next week. And I just they think they see less animals that they're going to be able to get a hold of, even though we're bringing more in. It's just going to be less pounds when it's all said and done. So my take is it's a sloppier market than I like it to see. But I think the under the underpinning in this market continues to be the drought similar to the corn. And I think that's where corn and cattle, fat cattle especially, could actually rally together if we stay hot and dry. And the hog market, October scoring new contract highs for the second straight day. We got August going off the board tomorrow. Big discount. Will the futures try to go up to that or not? I'm inclined to think not because I think that belly seasonal is coming here at this point and peaking. And that was really our rocket booster for that August contract, Michelle. So I would say if you ask me a week or two from now, whether I was right or wrong, it was probably going to be whether that belly seasonal did indeed peak this week. I think we also have to realize for the hog side of the equation, uh, the profitability is probably not that great for packers and we are coming to the end of the summer grilling season so i think there's a couple things working against the idea that october can fill that hole that august is likely to go uh, off at um, we'll, we'll keep an eye on those cutouts though thanks so much for joining us mike zuzalo with global commodity analytics